Hey guys, what's up? We are back with another Metasploitable. Now, I'm not sure which one this is. Um, but all of them... All of them are all the same, kind of. So, we are going to be looking at... We are going to be looking at Secure Shell or SSH. So, um... Do I need a chain? Nope. So let's just do a pseudo ARP scan. Let's see what's connected. Let's see if our Kali Linux machine can hit this. Um, IF config. I think it's 60. 90, 96, 96, and 96 is showing up, so that's awesome. So, like, before we get a Nessus going, um, let's just do an Nmap service version detection and started, and then. This is the command here that we need to start the Nessus service. Now, I've already done a scan of this before. So, I'm not going to do a scan just because I already have it. It'll just save a lot of time. <sighs> oh. I don't want this big screen. But as this is going, let's close this. We have open SSH running. Whatever the heck this is, is access denied. And then we have netkit rsh. So this... So let's open up this. Oh, show us some more information about it. With this, we just need to clear the cache. So, um, it you really just need cache check. You don't need form and history search. So we have RSH service detection, and we have that in there in the end map scan. And this is a high, we can see 1999. So the remote shell RSH is a command line program that enables 
clients to send commands onto the remote host without having to log in to the remote host first. For this to work, the remote host must be running the service. CVE 1999-0651 is a RSH service detection where Nessus detected the service running on the Metasploitable Linux machine. So what we're going to be doing is basically a brute force uh, attempt or attack. We are going to be using two different text files, a user name file and then a password file. And then we are going to be um, putting different passwords or usernames in those files. And of course, I'll put the, the actual one, and uh, then it will um, tell us what the username and password is. <sighs> so, um, looks like the that data is passed in between the client server and clear text so it's not encrypted and a man in the middle attack can exploit this to uh, get logins and passwords and um, some other things so let's open metasploit And let's go into the desktop and I want to name, I'm just looking back on my lab, I'm going to name it all capitals uh, user underscore file txt. Okay, let's go to um, ah. So now we need to put in some uh, potential usernames. So I already know the username, which is msf admin. So that's the username and password. So I'm just gonna try ut a uh, root um, admin username. I can't type user, and then I will put msf admin control. X, save it, and there is our file. So now I want to make a password file. And let's just try some passwords. Um, let's try password, passwords. Metasploit is taking a while. Let's try one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's try football, and then I will put. I'm going to put one more. Okay, great. 
So we can close this terminal. So what we are going to be wanting to use here is we are going to be wanting to use the exploit or it looks like we're going to be wanting to use a scanner. So use auxiliary Oops. scanner SSH ssh underscore login so now the um, the ssh login module can test a set of credentials on the target IP address and we can run brute force login attempts so let's do show options and we have all of the options here So we need our username file and our password file. And then we are going to set verbose to true because we want it to stop when it found when it found when it finds a match. So we want to set the our host to our target IP address and then we also want to set the verbose as true now we want to set the user file user file so we just want to click set user file and then what we want to do is we need to point it to the where our file is so that mine is on the desktop and then the user file, which is the username, is just user underscore file, all caps, dot txt. This will be different for you unless you put it on the desktop as well and named it the same. Then we need to set the pass file. And I don't think it matters if uh, it's case sensitive or not. Uh, in my notes, I didn't do the capital. I didn't have file as a capital, all caps. And on here, it's all capital letters. Capital letters so I don't know. And our uh, file name is pass underscore file or whatever you named it. And that's txt. Now we can also set stop on success. Because we do not, we want it to stop once it's found a match. And as you can see, everything's filled in, and we can um, do run or exploit here. It might take a little bit, 
and it's going to go through port 22 as we can see I'm not gonna change the screen but because this is the SSH so the first one it tried was root and password which failed because that's not the actual password it is MSF admin is the password and uh, that's the username it's taken some it's taken a little little bit of time here but now this is the thing is that it needs to check each username with every password So once we get, I think I put it as the last one, the real, the actual username is the last one. So we should be getting there soon. And then once it found a match, it will stop. Okay, next one. Oh, next one. So now we have a success. We have found the password and uh, the username and password. It just tells us some information about the the user and everything, and then we have opened a shell. So this module will test every username with every password that is contained in those files we've just added, and will notify us if each test was a fail or a success seen here we have one command shell opened as the test was successful and so then what we can do is we can interact with it so we just need to click sessions or type sessions and then dash I and then the session ID so we only have one session so we just want to uh, type a number one and then enter and now we are in a session and we can do ls to look around all the files directories and we can see that from before the other videos we have some text files um, we can do a who am I We can do a uh, PWD, see where we are at. I think we're in the home. Are we in the home? I think so. And we are in the home. So to start an interaction with the active sessions, just like what we did, we want to use the command sessions dash I and then the session ID so that we only have one session open it's just a number one if you had multiple sessions opens you could choose from you know the first one to the last one uh, once the command is executed we have access into the target machine we can use the ls command to list the files and the directories that we're currently in from here we have limited access in the target machine to search around so that is going to wrap it up here uh, thank you for watching.